Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School lesson for Sunday, December 18, 2022. I am Reverend Mary Tillman, an associate minister at Pleasant Green, and I will be the presenter of today's lesson. The winter quarter study is chosen, not choice. Unit one, the theme is God prepares the way. Today's lesson is numbered lesson number three in unit one. The lesson title in the Townsend Press Sunday School Commentary is John the Baptist, and in the Faith Pathway Bible Study for Adults, our lesson title is John Prepares the Way. Our devotional reading, John chapter 1, verses 29 through 42. Our background scriptures, Luke 3, verse 1, 2 through 20, and John the first chapter. And our printed passage, Luke chapter 3, verses 2 through 6, and verses 15 through 18. Our key verse is Luke, the third chapter, and the third verse from the NIV Bible. It reads, He went into all the country around the Jordan, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for an opportunity to study your lesson. As we learn more about how and why we should repent, we ask that you open up our understanding that all of us have a purpose and you sent us into this world to accomplish whatever is pleasing to you. Help us to be obedient and walk where you lead and guide us. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Our lesson introduction. John the baptizer was anointed and appointed by God to be the chief messenger who would usher in Christ's ministry and present him as the true Messiah. The core of John's message emphasized Christ as the Redeemer and the essential nature of repentance. Note that repentance will include regret, but regret will not necessarily lead to repentance. Because of the importance of John's message and ministry, he is a prominent personality in the four Gospels. All four Gospels make it clear that John recognized his role as the forerunner of Christ and that he understood and gladly embraced that Christ and Christ's ministry were superior to him and his ministry. Well, there is a lesson right there. We can talk a lot about that. Today's lesson shows us that God chooses people to handle specific duties and tasks in kingdom building. It is imperative that each believer knows, understands, and works in his or her area where God has purposed us to be. John the Baptist realized one greater was coming and it was his responsibility to prepare the people for his coming. Many in our churches would do well to follow John's example. Wouldn't you agree? We all know somebody who wants to be more than they are. But remember, you have been chosen for a specific purpose on this earth. And when we fulfill our purpose that God has made us for, things work well. It's when we get out of our lane and into somebody else's lane that we run into problems. So get your Sunday school book your Bible, your pen and notepad, and follow along as we go forward with this wonderful lesson. Let's get started. The title of our lesson is, John Prepares the Way. There are three questions for you to consider. The first question, what was the bold message that John preached? Our second question, what was John's response to the people who suspected that he may be the Messiah? And question number three, what did baptism symbolize? Let's look at the lesson's biblical context. As we studied in the first two lessons this month, God chose the aging priest Zechariah and his wife Elizabeth to be the parents of John the Baptist. Zechariah is also referred to as Zacharias in the King James Version of the Bible. Because of Zechariah's unbelief 
in the promise of God that was delivered by the angel Gabriel, Zechariah was sentenced to muteness. He was not able to speak until 10 days after John was born. God called and ordained John to prepare the way for the Messiah. John had a unique way of preparing the way for Jesus. John the Baptist welcomed persons to the spiritual experience of repentance through water baptism for the forgiveness of sins and transformation of their lives. John preached a powerful message of repentance. He taught and preached in the Jordan Valley, a region spanning about 150 miles. John spent this time in the desert living in the mountainous area of Judea between the city of Jerusalem and the Dead Sea. John was in the wilderness spending quality time with God and getting spiritually prepared for his ministry. See, we have to prepare for ministry. This is not something you just grab and run and do. We need to be spiritually prepared for any ministry work that we are going to do. John the Baptist, he dressed differently. His diet was different. He wore clothes made of camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist, not the typical garment of a prophet. John's diet consisted of locusts and wild honey. You'll find that in Matthew, the third chapter, verse number four. John the Baptist lived a simple life and he focused on the kingdom work set before him. John and Jesus were the sons of two cousins, Elizabeth and Mary. John never tried to compete with Jesus. Instead, he was humble enough to admit that not only was Jesus greater than him, but also compared to Jesus, he was unworthy to even unfasten the sandal on Jesus' feet. And we're going to get into that in this lesson. John was a controversial figure in his day because his ministry challenged the self-righteous to admit their sins and recognize their need for a savior. As he pointed out sin, he also pointed to the coming Lord Jesus Christ who would deliver those who repented from the power and penalty of sin. How many of you know the wages of sin is death? The aims for this week's lesson. First, Recognize the ministry of John as the fulfillment of prophecy in preparing the way for Jesus' ministry. Our second aim, value the ways in which John was obedient to God's call on his life. And our third aim, compare the baptism of John and the baptism of Jesus. There are two outlines in the Adult Pathway Sunday School book. I will share two key points from each of these outlines and expound some on each of them. The first outline is, he preached the word, Luke 3, verses 2 through 6. The second outline is, he reached the world, Luke 3rd chapter, verses 15 through 18. Let's begin our analysis of the text with the first lesson outline. Outline number one, he preached the word. Luke chapter 3, verses 2 through 6. Key point number one, John the Baptist was called and appointed by God to prepare the way for Jesus. Verse 2 from the NIV Bible reads, During the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah in the wilderness. God's appointed time for John's appointed ministry had arrived. Under Jewish law, there was only one high priest. He was appointed from Aaron's line and he would hold his position for life. The religious system had become corrupt and the Roman government was appointing its own religious leaders to maintain greater control over the Jews. The Roman authorities had replaced the Jewish appointed Anus and replaced him with Anus's son-in-law Caiaphas. Nevertheless, it is noted that Anus retained his title and also much of the power it carried because the Jews believed the high priest's position to be for life. And you can read that in Acts, the fourth chapter, verse number six. Pilate, Herod, and Caiaphas were the most powerful leaders in Palestine, but they were upstaged by a wilderness prophet from Judea. Pontius Pilate was notorious for his brutal massacres of the Jewish people in Judea and his insensitivity for the Jews. 
Verse number three says, He went into all the country around Jordan preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. John's message from the Lord was short and simple, bold and personal. Repent so that God may forgive you of your sins. This was his message. He was charged with preparing the way for Christ's ministry. John lived in the wilderness since his youth. Luke 1 verse 80 says, So the child grew and became strong in the spirit and was in the deserts till the day of his manifestation to Israel. But now, prompted by the word of God, John begins to fulfill his ultimate calling to be the forerunner of the Messiah. John was the first prophet called since Malachi, some 400 years earlier. John's coming was foretold over 700 years previously by the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah 40 verses 3 through 5 reads, A voice of one calling in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Verse 4, Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain. Verse 5, And the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people will see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Again, that's Isaiah 40, verses 3 through 5. God chose to speak through John the Baptist. Again, John had a simple message. One sermon that he preached over and over again. Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Key point number two. John came preaching repentance to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. He had a powerful message of repentance. We need this message today. Repentance has two sides, turning away from sin and turning toward God. To be truly repentant, we must do both. Repentance is a change of mind, heart, and purpose. Many people ask for forgiveness, but seldom repent. Verse number four reads, as it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. In John's day, when a king would take a trip to a particular area, there would always be couriers that would go out in advance of the king telling the people, the king is going to be visiting on such and such a day. Clean up your yards, get the trash and all taken care of, repair the roads and all for the king's coming. This was done so that everything would be in excellent condition and the king could see that everything was going well. And so it was with John the Baptist. He was the courier telling the people, make your path straight. The king is coming. People heard John's voice and they flocked to the wilderness to listen to what he had to say. Now, you must remember, he's out in the wilderness. There are no microphones. There are no sound system. There's no surround sound. There's nothing to project his voice. John's voice was heard from the wilderness and the people came to listen to what he had to say. The word of God is powerful and it draws people. And when one is preaching God's word, it should draw and hold your attention so that you get the message and the message that God wants you to receive. In verses five and six, it says, every valley shall be filled in, every mountain and hill made low. The crooked road shall become straight, the rough ways smooth, and all people will see God's salvation. John called for all men to prepare to meet Jesus. In verse 5, John was essentially saying the high and mighty would be made humble and the lowly would be lifted. By the grace of God, every obstacle to receiving Christ can be removed. 
Verse 6 affirms that Christ is accessible to all and is available to all. It does not matter your condition. It does not matter about your ethnicity. It does not matter about where you fit in society. Christ is available to all. For the word said, whosoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. It also says, whosoever will, let him come. So that includes all of us, not a particular uh, branch of us of one society or another. Everybody is welcome to come to Jesus Christ. Outline number two, he reached the world, and that's Luke chapter three, verses 15 through 18. John called for the people to repent and be baptized for the forgiveness of sins. Verse 15 reads, The people were waiting expectantly and were all wondering in their hearts if John might possibly be the Messiah. The response to those who suspected John to be the Messiah is in verse number 16. John answered, I baptize you with water, but one who is is more powerful than I will come. The straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. He emphatically stated that one far greater than he was coming. John made it clear, I am not him, but I'm just preparing you for him. I just want you to know he's on his way. Key point number one, John was preparing the people for the coming of the Messiah. An essential function of John's ministry was to baptize with water those who accepted his message of repentance. But he made it clear that he baptized with water, which represented an outward symbol of an inward change. John proclaimed the good news that one more powerful than he is coming and will baptize the people with the Holy Spirit and fire. Baptizing people with the Holy Spirit, meaning to purify and enable the people with divine power. John's baptism was symbolic. It could not purify or save. Christ's baptism, on the other hand, would be transformational. John's baptism was external. Christ's baptism was internal. John promotes Jesus. John declared that Christ whom he magnified was so great, so divine, that he wasn't worthy even to untie the straps of his sandals. John demonstrated great humility. Throughout John's ministry, he made it clear that he was the preparer of the one coming. John was born to herald or announce the Savior Jesus Christ. John understood the ministry to which God had called him and had no problem staying in his lane, fully content with the work assigned to him. John chapter 3 verse 30 reads, He must increase, but I must decrease. Although John prepared the way for Jesus' ministry, his bold message of repentance is relevant and timely for believers in every generation. Key point number two. John preached a bold and fearless message. Verse 17 reads, His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. The coming one, whose name is Jesus, is coming to judge and purify the people of God. He would baptize with the Holy Spirit and fire, and he will carry out the final judgment, separating the wheat and chaff. Purging, threshing the floor, was of the process of separating the wheat from the chaff. The wheat, which is the good grain, would be preserved and used, but the chaff, which is the useless straw or the stubble outer husk of the grain, would be destroyed or burned in the fire. And just as the chaff was separated from the grain, Jesus the Messiah would separate the good and the bad. John warns of impending judgment by comparing those who refuse to live for God to chaff. 
By contrast, John compared the obedient and those who repent and transform their lives to nourishing grains of wheat. Those who repent and believe hold great value in God's eyes. Aren't you glad you're a believer? Aren't you glad that you repented of your sins and that we are valuable in God's eyesight? Verse 18 says, And with many other words, John exhorted the people and proclaimed the good news to them. Luke made it clear with his statement that John fulfills the prophecy of Isaiah, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord and make straight his path. Luke 3 verse number 4. In summary, John the Baptist was born to be the forerunner of Christ. He was called to proclaim the Prince of Peace the one and only Messiah, Jesus Christ. He was a voice crying in the wilderness, preaching with such passion because he was convinced that Jesus and no one else is the Christ. Are you convinced today, my brothers and sisters? Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the one and only Messiah, the beloved Son of God, that he came down through 42 generations because of your sins and my sins? that he tabernacled here for 33 years, gave up his life for us on the cross at Calvary. Jesus, I'm like John, I am convinced that Jesus and no one else is the Christ. A closing thought and question. As we studied this lesson, it is clear that John the Baptist held no misunderstanding of his calling, nor did he have any sense of competition with Jesus. Why is it so necessary to stay in your lane, focusing on and being content with whatever God has called you to do? That's food for thought, something to quander. I hope you've gotten something out of this lesson. It opened my eyes and I hope it opened yours. Let us have a closing prayer. God, our Father, we thank you for the lesson learned in this Sunday school lesson. We ask that you open our eyes to know and commit ourselves to do the assignment you have specifically given us to do and not be distracted by what others are doing as we strive to please you as we serve others. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.